Hello, my name is Rob Garner. I'm a computer programming instructor, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to use integers and floating point numbers in Python. So I'm going to uh, open a new folder, and uh, we'll call this one integers and floating point numbers integers and floating point numbers. And so we have this folder open here on the left in our explorer, our file explorer. And we're going to create a new program called um, um, numbers demo .py. So the first thing we're going to look at are integers. So what are integers? Integers are whole numbers um, that are uh, positive or negative without decimals. By the way, this is a comment. If you put a number sign, uh, what that tells the uh, Python to do is just ignore it. And floating point numbers are real numbers with decimal point dividing the integer and fractional parts. So, for example, so examples are things like this. 1, 2, minus 3, minus 4, 0, and um, floating floats have decimal points. So what can we... Um, um, do with that. Well, um, we can uh, we can assign them into variables. We're going to learn more about variables later, but essentially a variable is a space in memory where we can store a value. So here we're saying, hey, set the variable a equal to 5. And when you do this, basically, the way I would think about this is this equal sign is assign into. So we're taking the value 5, the integer 5, and assigning it into a. And then we're taking the integer 3 and assigning it into b. And once we have that, we can start doing some math. So we can say the sum is equal to a plus b. And then we could print the sum of a plus b is and this sum. So I'm going to put this in here and run this. I hit F5. And we're going to run the program. We'll see it appear down here. And it tells us that the sum of 5 plus 3 is equal to 8. We can also do um, the uh, difference. And if we do that, we can see here now we have the sum is equal to 8. The difference is equal to 5 minus 3, which is 2. And we can do multiplication. And if we multiply a times b, we get 15. The quotient is we run this, we get 1.6666 repeating. So this is actually a floating point number. Let's say, though, that we wanted to get um, the, the quotient, the integer quotient. So let's just say integer, yeah, integer quotient. We can use this double slash and run that, and what we'll see is the integer quotient of a and b is 1. 
So what did it do? Well, it ignored, because it's here we're doing integer division, it's ignoring any decimal portion and just taking the top level. So that can sometimes be useful. You don't necessarily always want 0.666. You may just want how does it go, how many times does it go into it evenly? So A, which is um, so, so B, which is 3, goes into A, which is 5, one time evenly. And then, okay, so we got that, but it would be nice to have the remainder. So we can get the remainder with the modulus operator. And then that allows us to get the remainder. So the nice, so sometimes we want to deal with floating point numbers. Sometimes we want to deal with integers. And when we want to deal with integers, and, and mostly it comes down to division, it's mostly because we want to see how many times something goes into something else evenly. And so that's where the use of integers um, can be useful. Now we can also work with floats, obviously. And in this case, we are making A equal to 5.0. So this 0 0.0 makes it a float. So here, we're assigning integers here. We're assigning a float. And what makes it a float is this decimal point. And so now when we do this, notice what happens. We get a similar answer, but rather than 8, we get 8.0. And that point zero is, why does it put that extra point zero on there? It's doing that in order to tell us that we are, Python is trying to tell us that that's a floating point number. Then we can calculate the difference. We can calculate the product, and we can do the quotient. We get the same kinds of results, but we get decimal points. Now, sometimes what happens is we want to convert Or let's do integer to float. And the way we can do that is, let's say we have A equals 5. We can use the keyword float here to convert A here into a float. And then... You can see here it converted this 5 into a 5.0. So it turned it a, a integer into a float. And we can do the, it the other way. Let's say we have b, which is 3.0. We're going to convert it using the int keyword. So if we want to convert an int to a float, or really anything to a float, we put, we put the value in this function call, the floating function call. The way, and this is a function call because you've got these parentheses. The keyword is float, and, it's a, and what this is saying, hey, Python, take A, whatever it is, and turn it into a float. Here is telling Python to take B, whatever it is, and turn it into an int. And you can see here, this B, which was 3.0, is now being turned into 3, which is the integer. So this can become very useful, uh, especially if... We have a floating point values, and we want to do some integer math in, with them. We can convert them to integers, and then maybe we want to see how many times something um, divides into something else evenly. Uh, this is where you often are using integers. And also, there's instances where we're going to be using numbers as indexes. Indexes can't be a floating point number. They need to be an integer, and so these conversion values become important. Thank you very much.